Hebrews chapter 7. We'll just read one verse here in uh, verse 11. If therefore perfection were by the Levitical priesthood, for under it the, law, the people received the law, what further need was there that another priest should arise after the order of Melchizedek and not be called after the order of Aaron? So the uh, <clears throat> title of my sermon is Priesthood of Mormonism. So Priesthood of Mormonism, so I was throughout the week or actually throughout the month, I just, you know, been kind of uh, uh, educating myself on just what the Mormons believe and what doctrines they hold and, and what does their church actually teach. And um, although I don't recommend for any new believer to go out and start, you know, just studying other false religions, I do think you should definitely have a strong, solid foundation that you can stand on, that you can be settled on and know with surety that what you believe is truth from what you've read in the Bible. But by having that foundation, once you know the Bible and you know your foundation, when looking at these other false religions, it's very easy to spot the chinks in their armor. It's very easy to see the spots in their garment. And one of the things that it just dawned on me is just completely contrary to the Bible is the priesthood of Mormonism. So what Mormonism teaches is that the priesthood or when Joseph Smith, this false prophet, he wanted to restore the church. He wanted to restore the gospel. And how the story goes is that Jesus and God the Father both appeared in two different personages unto him and told him he is going to be restoring the new church, if you will. Later on, Joseph Smith reveals a revelation through the book of Doctrines and Covenants that him and his friend Oliver was uh, visited by Peter, James, and John. I'm sorry, by John the Baptist, and then later would be visited by Peter, James, and John. And that was told him by supposedly Jesus Christ. So the Mormon doctrine teaches, and I'm going to read to you, Doctrine and Covenants 2712. This is what um, the apostle uh, the, Joseph Smith said about the uh, priesthood. It says, and also with Peter... And also with Peter and James and John, whom I have sent. So he's saying, Jesus said this unto him. He's saying, and also with Peter and James and John, whom I have sent unto you, by whom I have ordained you and confirmed you to be an apostle and a special, special witness of my name and bear the keys of your ministry of the same things, which I, I'm sorry, Doctrine and Covenants 13.1. It says, and upon you, my fellow servants, in the name of Messiah. So this is supposedly John the Baptist talking. To him, and he says, I confer the priesthood of Aaron, which holds the keys of the ministering of the angels and of the gospel of repentance and baptism of immersion for the remission of sins. This shall never be taken away from the earth until the sons of Levi do again an offering unto the Lord in righteousness. So he says that the, that the, the, the John the Baptist of the New Testament came to him and Oliver and said, I'm bestowing upon you the keys of of the, the priesthood of Aaron. This is what's known as the Aaronic priesthood. And how, how contradictory is that when the Bible literally says in verse 11, it says in Hebrews 7, 11, if therefore perfection were by the Levitical priesthood, for under it the people, uh, for under it the people received the law, what further need was there that another should, be, uh, should arise after the order of Melchizedek and not be called after the order of Aaron. So he, what he's saying is there is a Levitical priesthood, and there was fault with that. You could not be perfected with that priesthood, is what he's saying. So he says, since you couldn't be perfected from that priesthood, why wasn't the new priesthood called after the order of Aaron? But we have this order of Melchizedek. He's like, answer, he's like just propping a preposition. Like, if there's a new covenant, a new testament, why isn't it after Aaron? And it, what he's saying is, because we have the, the Melchizedek priesthood, is why there is no Aaronic priesthood. So the very contradiction of them saying, hey, we have the Aaronic priesthood is fault number one. There's no such thing. We have the Melchizedek priesthood. Jesus has that priesthood. He's the one who's perfected the priesthood. Therefore, we are in the new covenant under the new priest through Jesus Christ. And so it's kind of ironic that they say, no, we have a new priesthood. It's called after the order of Aaron when the Bible literally says there's not an order of Aaron because we have the Melchizedek priesthood. Does that make sense? 
So that's the first one. And the first you know, thing that's wrong with that uh, priesthood is that it even exists. It shouldn't even exist. Now, what's also wrong with the uh, priesthood of Mormonism, if you would, um, turn to uh, Hebrews chapter 8. So more, uh, Joseph Smith, when he says, you know, <clears throat> when he tried to restore the gospel, or rest restore the church, you know, he's, you know, when there's a new gospel, when there's a new priesthood, the Bible even says that um, in Hebrews 8, 13, it says, in that he saith, a new covenant, he hath made the first old. Now that which decayeth and waxeth old is ready to vanish away. So he's saying, now there was an old one, we have a new one. And Jesus Christ is Melchizedek priesthood, is what they say, but we also have the Aaronic priesthood. So he says, because there's a, the, the, the first one was made old, we have a new covenant. What he goes on to say, or, and then in Hebrews 7, it says, for the priesthood being changed, there is made necessity of a change also to the law. So he's trying to bring in this change through this new priesthood, and it's uh, and through through this priesthood, he says that the, the children hold the Aaronic priesthood until a certain age, and then you receive the keys of the Melchizedek priesthood. So this is another false teaching that you could obtain a false, you could obtain a Melchizedek priesthood. It says also. In, uh, in uh, uh, Doctrines and Covenants 27, 12, it says, And also Peter and James and John, whom I have sent unto you, by whom I have ordained you and confirmed you to be apostles. So he's saying, I'm going to send uh, Peter, James, and John to you, which later he says he saw. And he says, because they have the Melchizedek priesthood, they're going to give the keys unto Joseph Smith so he can obtain the Melchizedek priesthood. Well, let's just see what the Bible says about you obtaining the Melchizedek priesthood. It says there in uh, Hebrews chapter 15, or go back to Hebrews 7. Hebrews 7, <clears throat> verse 15, it says, And it is yet far more evident that after the similitude of Melchizedek, there ariseth another priest. So after the order of Melchizedek, the picture that he was to show of a new priest coming, says we have, uh, it says, there ariseth another priest. Not another priest, multiple priests, one singular priest. There ariseth another priest. Go down to verse 21. For those priests were made without an oath. But the, talking about the Levitical priesthood. But this with an oath by him that said unto him, The Lord shall swear and will not repent. Thou, singular, art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. So he's saying that not only is it one priest that has it forever, it says, the reason, why he, the reason why he has the Melchizedek priesthood is because it's an everlasting priesthood. Like once you have it, it's there forever. There's no need for another priesthood after that. There's no need for an Aaronic priesthood. There's no need for any other priesthood because we have a high priest. He was made a high priest after the order of Melchizedek. And he is the one who is, uh, is after, uh, the, after Melchizedek forever. And it says in uh, Hebrews 7.23, it says... And they were truly, and they truly were many priests, because they were not suffered to continue by reason of death. But this man, because he continueth ever, hath an unchangeable priesthood. So there's one man that has this priesthood, not multiple, not Peter, not James, not John, not me, not you. We have one priest. It's Jesus Christ. And I'm glad that I have a priest that I can put my faith in. You know, I love my brethren, I love my pastor, but I would never want, you know, my brethren to be a priest unto me. I wouldn't want my pastor to be a priest unto me. I wouldn't want a man to be in priest, to have that mediator between me and God. If there is one man that's a mediator, he better be perfect. And if, if he is a priest, it better be everlasting, because I'm sinning every day. How do I know I'm getting to heaven? Because he always makes intercession for me. He lives forever. His, his atonement on the mercy seat is there forever. So not only is it false to say that Aaronic priesthood exists, because it shouldn't even exist if the Melchizedek priesthood is, is there. But it's wrong also to say that another man could obtain the Melchizedek priesthood, because there's only one that could obtain that. And, it, and the whole point of the Melchizedek priesthood is because he's a priest forever. Like, that's the whole reason. Because, yeah... If there wasn't a priest forever, we should have an Aaronic priesthood. Because guess what? 
the, the person that made the offering in the Old Testament, he had to make the atonement for everyone, but he also had to make atonement for himself, right? Because there's fault with that. But there's no fault with the, with the Melchizedek priesthood. He's a priest forever. There's also, you know, things about the, the black people that, you know, the black people couldn't obtain the priesthood in the Mormon religion. Well, through the Melchizedek priesthood, everyone can now obtain the priesthood. And that's not a Melchizedek priesthood. The Bible says we've been made kings and priests unto God and his Father. Jesus Christ has made us kings and priests unto God. And we are that, we have that high priest. We're a priest ourselves, but we have a high priest who paid for our, uh, our ticket into heaven. But through Jesus Christ, every black man, every Latino, every white man, and no matter the color of your skin, through Melchizedek, we all have a mediator with God. Amen. And also, you know, it, it says that, um, it says in that last part, in Doctrines and Covenants, he says, I'm giving you this Aaronic priesthood until the sons of a Levi uh, make an offering to the Lord in righteousness. So what is he saying? He's saying, the Aaronic priesthood is going to be around in the Mormon church until the sons of Levi, the Jews basically, turn to the Lord and start offering in righteousness, start believing on the Lord basically. And so basically what he's saying is once the Levitical v, uh, priesthood gets back on board, then the Aaronic priesthood is done. And then the, so what he's saying is the law is going to come back into effect. No, the Levitical priesthood will never come back. It's the priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. He is our priest. There's never going to be a Levitical priesthood. It's just the Melchizedek forever. He ever liveth and make intercession for us. And so, um, you know, and it was only through Jesus Christ or only through the law was the Le Levites allowed to be a priest. You know, in the old covenant, only the Levites could be the priest. With the new covenant, with the New Testament, with the Melchizedek priesthood, Every man's a priest. Every Gentile's a priest. But you have to go through the high priest. So those are three things that were wrong with the Mormon um, priesthood, and we'll end with a prayer. Lord, I just want to say thank you for this time up here. Pray that you would um, uh, bless the next preacher and uh, to uh, show us something through your word. And in Jesus' name I pray. Amen.